What's up? I am Mike Flynn, host of the Impact Entrepreneur Show, and this is Matthew Swinerton, a man who needs no introduction. You know who he is. And I am here to ask him some deep and meaningful <laughs> questions. We're not talking about business today. We're not talking about events Santa Cruz. We are talking about Matthew Swinerton. I'm so nervous. <laughs> so nothing to be nervous about. So the first question okay. is when, when you think back about growing up as a kid, yeah. what made your family unique? <laughs> My family was very unique. Um, okay, what can I say on this? We said to keep it clean, right? Yeah, yeah keep I it guess, clean. Yeah, yeah. No, my parents were... Um, but you can share the dirty laundry. Yeah, no, okay. So, so my parents were this complete, like... I, I lived in a hippie-like culture, for sure. Like, you know, the, um, my parents looked like John Lennon, Lennon and Yoko Ono. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and, you know, just I see pictures of me and, like, you know, my hair was down to here. No way. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, God, yeah, they're just so uh, we lived a, a very crazy life, but I, I, it's funny how my parents raised us. I feel like, you know, I, I feel like I barely ever got in trouble. Um, we just like we had a good relationship, and my parents did these crazy th trips with us all the time. So we would go like, I, I never wanted to go to them when they would tell us like, okay, we're gonna go to this bat cave in New Mexico. Or we're gonna go see this like, you know, the, oh no, this like eclipse in Baja California, and like me and my brother would be like, really, we have to drive, you know, forty five hours to like go to this place or whatever. And it sounded educational. It didn't sound fun. As soon as we went there, we had a blast. Mm. It was like, yeah. And so they had a really big impact on us. And I think also they they had a um, gave us a sense of adventure. Mm. So I think still now, like my favorite times in my life. Um, I always say is like when I'm doing road trips with my kids, like I, we're driving and I'm like, you know what, this is, I have three kids. I have a four year old, a nine year old and a 15 year old. And I'm like, you know what, this is like the only time that I'm going to be, we're going to have this moment. Yeah. Where I'm going to be with all my family. I want to ask you about your kids. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I had a pretty, and also I went to an interesting kind of hippie -ish school. Um, so I had a very interesting child growing up, but I think it, I'm glad I did. You mentioned your kids. Yeah. You have three kids. Yep. You love them very much. Yep. They drive you. They're your mission. Yep. What is your greatest hope for them? To be happy. Yeah. I mean, isn't that like, the, I feel like it, it's so nerve wracking, especially in the day, in the, the times that we live, we live in, um, you know, just, you want them to be, enjoy themselves. And as a parent, that's always tough. Like, okay. How do I discipline them? Mm -hmm. like, you know, do I am I disciplined too much? Mm -hmm. Should I let them be more free? Um, should I let my son, you know, go ride his bike, you know, out in the world, or am I be like, you know what? No, someone can kidnap you, mm -hmm. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's always the the challenge. But um, what's your greatest fear? Oh man, that my son moves out when he's old enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that's it. I mean, I. I my life is my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if anything happened to them, I mean, we've, we've had medical issues and other stuff that happened with the kids and we've gone through a lot of, of stuff. That's like, you know, we got through it and now, now we're, now we're, we're living. But, um, if something happened to them, I probably is my, my biggest fear. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. could happen. So going back to you, yeah. If some, you know, it's many years from now, it's, you know, you're dead. Okay. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> it's not a good And now story. someone's preparing to, they're researching, they're preparing to write the biography of yeah. Matthew Swinerton. Yeah. And they're doing research. What is the most shocking thing that they would discover? Shocking thing. Oh, man. Um, or surprising. Surprising. You know what? I, I don't know. I think I'm pretty like, I'm very open book with everybody. I feel like I don't like, there's nothing I really have to hide. Um, I mean, look on social media, you see like all my problems or any issue I have or whatever. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to say like, I really am not good at this. Mm -hmm. or, I'm just, or this is what I did. I remember telling, you know, kind of an adult friend when I was younger, like, oh, my parents, you know, it was the same bad I did. But I was like, you know what, I was, I wasn't, I forgot, I did, I forgot exactly what it was, but it's like, I wasn't supposed to open this yet, but I did. My parents said I couldn't, but I did. And it's like, I have this like desire to tell people all the things I do wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. So I don't think people are going to be surprised. Um, mm. I don't know that I've been, God, I've been going to see Depeche Mode concerts for the last 30 years. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think people know that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any big humongous surprises. Yeah. 
when you think back to your, uh, you know, your foray into entrepreneurship in Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. who was the first person who believed in you? Uh, Margaret Rosas. Yeah, by far, I would say. Um, so Margaret, who works at Looker right now, um, and she was at Product Ops, she had her own business beforehand. Um, we did an event called Tech Raising, and it was a weekend hackathon, which is happening very soon, actually, again. Um, but we became very close, and I told her, like, you know what, These are this is a, a project that I want to do. And it was five years ago, um, and I, we took a walk. And, you know, it's kind of nice to just have that moment. It's like, hey, this is what I want to do. And we, we talked it out. And um, that was like my first moment. I mean, I feel like I've always been have a, the entrepreneur bug. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the only time I was actually suspended from school was for selling candy. Because mm. I would sell every, um, every day for like probably six months or so. I would go to school. I had a bunch of candy. The certain it's called now and later's. And I would I would break up the package and sell them individually. So I'd buy them <laughs> for like thirty cents. But individually, I would you know sell them for like you know sixty cents or whatever. Um, and as soon as I got to school, I would have fifty kids around me. Um, principal said stop. My whole desk was full of candy. Um, he tried to shut me down a few times. My operation. Um, and eventually I, you know, he said, okay, one more time and you're going to be suspended. And I got suspended for a day. So, yeah. <laughs> so, but I had paper routes. I had a bunch of stuff that I was always doing. So I've always loved the entrepreneur spirit. I think I don't, I'm not a good employee. Yeah. And so, you know, I think I, most entrepreneurs have that in common. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like I, I, I'm probably easily fireable. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, I just, I love to do what I do. I like to be creative and I like to, ha like to dream. Like, mm -hmm. like this is what I want to mm -hmm. do. In the, yeah, and so, um, so I've always had that bug. Last question before I hand the mic back over to you. Okay. Which is difficult for me to do. <laughs> what is your definition of impact? Impact. Oh, you know what I, I, why I like to do what I do with event Santa Cruz. Um, and also with my work with Santa Cruz works is, um, I get to showcase people. I get to put them, like make them like, famous for a day I get to like showcase them to the world I get to put somebody on the cover of the Good Times magazine or the Sentinel on the cover and they get to actually bring this to their grandma like grandma look what I'm on the cover yes. yeah uh, I love that you know I get to help people tell their story mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and so I, I just it's so fun to um, I mean this interview is about me which is very awkward in many ways but <laughs> I love being on the opposite side and like hearing people's stories yeah yeah, and like, and then getting that story out to the world. Um, I feel that is probably out of all things I do, um, that is probably the most important for my my work. Well, Matthew, yeah. you are an incredibly generous person, and I am very honored to call you a friend. Yeah, and I appreciate you. your support and having me on just a moment ago <laughs> as a, as one of your interviewees. Yeah. And a, it's been an honor to interview you oh, again because you. you were on my show last year. Thank you. All right, brother. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you want to see more, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We would really appreciate it. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications, because then if you do, you'll be the first one to actually see our video. And lastly, again, if you like the video, why don't you like the video? Okay, thank you very much.